Sabbath peace. I'm trying not to. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn that the word of truth that's given to us by the most high God. All honor goes to the Son through the Father, whose name is Yahushua. Through the Father, to through, the Father, through, the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the true and only hope for salvation. It is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. If we do not obey him, it is made manifest that we do not believe and that um, it is made manifest that we do not believe and, that, already and we are already condemned. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that are watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that we might live. This is going to be a rough darn night tonight. The devil in here working. You hear me? That's hilarious. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, de the devil in here working. Come on. Satan in here busy. You hear me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But God. You sound like a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> you know how they get to going. <laughs> They Satan in here work. Bro, they get a devil so much no, credit, devil, bro. The devil, the devil balling in their eye, bro. They, they <laughs> so much credit. I was like, man, y'all give him so much credit. Oh, he get blamed for everything. He devil got a like, bad rap with the Christian, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> God, he get blamed for everything. He's like, man, that wasn't even me. You God, know what I'm saying? God probably trying to protect them, break down their car before they turn down their street and get in a car accident. <laughs> the devil <laughs> put me in a car accident this morning. <laughs> No, I like, mean, I ain't had nothing to do with that. Yeah, man. My car broke down. <laughs> I'm the one that got you an increase at your job. What you talking about? <laughs> That's hilarious. Let's open up. Um, where y'all want to start off? Oh, Genesis. <laughs> Did you want to start off in Genesis? You want to start off in the law? We like definitely, Genesis? we definitely going back to Genesis. But what, what, should, what verse should we start off with? Uh, should we do Isaiah 28 or or John 7 or no nah, we can do uh we can do Isaiah John 28 6. I'm gonna do Isaiah 28 or so let's Isaiah do 29 or we can do um John 6 44 we can do oh or we can do John 1 John 1 but well, no I want to tie into John 1 we can do we can do we definitely gonna go to John Bowman we'll tie into John 1 you know what I'm saying? We got you gotta get some backstory a little bit before you just jump right there. Let's uh trying to think, what else can we do? Let's do uh, new beginnings, y'all. So you know we gotta try to figure something out. Let's see, let's do let's do, let's do let's do John six. Let's John John six forty four. John six forty five. John six forty four, man. No, nah, John six forty two. After that, I want Matthew chapter thirteen. Uh, I'm not okay. I was just sleepy. This is uh, this is John chapter uh, six verse forty two. And after that, I want Matthew chapter 13. What does the book say? And they said, is not this Yahushua, the son of Joseph, whose mm -hmm. father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I came down from heaven? Right? So he said, how in the world is this man talking about he came down from heaven? This is the son of darn Joseph. Right? Let's hear about it. Yahushua therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. He said the only way somebody can come to him is if the Father who sent him draw them. And he said he's going to raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. And he said, he told us that the prophets wrote that all of them would be taught of Yah. Right? Therefore, every, every man, therefore, that has heard and has learned of the father comes unto me. He said, if you've heard and you've learned of the father, the end result is that you come to him. Right. So we know that the father is going to draw. 
the people, right? And at the same time, we know that anyone who comes to him has had to hear and learn of the Father, all right? That tells us something. To be drawn by God is to be taught by God. It's to hear God and to be taught by God. That's what we're here for, right? We're here to learn, right? And when we're here to learn, Matthew chapter 13 is going to let us know. It's Matthew chapter 13, verse uh, 51, 52 maybe. Let's see what 51 say first. It's Matthew chapter 13, verse 52. Let's do 52. Then said he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder. This is important to understand what he's saying. Every scribe, what's a scribe for us? Expert in the law of scripture. All right? So this is an expert when it comes to our scripture, when it comes to our history, when it comes to our prophets. When it comes to our law, right? This is someone who, who was an expert in it. They're well-versed in these things. He's a scribe. He's someone who's, who's able to copy the law accurately, right? He's trusted to copy the law accurately, copy the, 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 the prophets in this history accurately into another book, right? So he said every scribe, that means someone who's well-versed in what we consider the Old Testament, who is also what? Instructed unto the kingdom of heaven. So that's our New Testament when you're talking about the kingdom of heaven, right? So you said somebody who's an expert in the Old Testament and also instructed concerning the New Testament is like what? Is, uh, is like unto a man that is a householder which brings forth out of his treasure things new and old. Right? He's like someone who can bring forth things from his treasure both new and old. That means that they are able to take the New Testament and put it with the Old Testament, right? And present it in a way that this is a treasure, right? Grab now Isaiah chapter 28. We're going to try to put all this together real quick just so we can, we have a clear understanding of how we understand the book. We're rightly divided at too. Oh, that Timothy? Tim, it's 1 Timothy. It's got to be 1 Timothy, right? 1 Timothy probably uh, 2 maybe? Or is it? What's 1 Timothy go to? 6 or 5? 5. Wait. 5 or 5. Let's grab, uh, let's grab Isaiah first, and we'll look for that. Nope. 1 Timothy goes to chapter 6. That's 6. Right, I want to say that's like 1. I want to say it's 2. Is Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9? Whom shall he teach knowledge? Book say, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And who is he going to make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. All right, so he's asking the question, who's going to teach the knowledge? Or, I mean, who is he going to teach the knowledge to? Who is he going to make to understand doctrine? Is it going to be those who are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast? Talking about a toddler, a little baby, right? So he said, is it going to be babies that understand the doctrine, the teaching, and understand the teaching that he's given? Let's see. For precept must be upon precept. He said, the way that you have to understand it is precept going to be upon precept. A precept is a commandment. So he said, you have to put commandment on top of commandment, right? Just like we, what we just read from Matthew, he was saying, you have to bring forth both the old and the new from the storehouse, right? The treasures, it has to come from the old and the new. So watch what he said here. Precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Old and new. You have to be able to take it from multiple places, right? And then present it, right? It's the only way that you can understand it. Let's see. Keep going. But with stammering lips will he speak to this people to whom he said. What? Well, so let's say that one more lips, time. With stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. So now he's telling us that. And the same thing that he's talking about, you have to put it all together. He said, I'm going to speak to people in a way they don't understand. And that's because it has to be, it's a puzzle. It has to be put together in a certain way. If it's not put together, you're going to be looking like, man, I don't know what this book's talking about. There's a lot of people, that's their attitude towards it. They don't know what it's talking about. They know they're supposed to know what it's talking about, so they make up stuff. Right? Or they make assumptions. We all done it. Right? We look at the book, hear something, we make assumptions because we know we should know what it's talking about. But if we don't, we just don't. 
and we have we don't have a culture of such honesty where we can say, I just don't know. Right? I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is. We don't have an honest culture. So our culture is more fake it till you make it. You don't know, make it up. Make an assumption. Start your own church. You know what I'm saying? How is God speaking to your heart? Right? So then, then we come up with all these different theologies and we come up with all these different denominations and we end up making a darn mess. Right? So then we have, we have, he said, with stammering lips, stammering lips is like a stutter. And he said, and with another tongue, that's a different language, I will speak to these people. So understand, that's God saying that he's going to speak to you in a different language. Right? Just logically, if I wanted somebody, to, I mean, I just wanted to give somebody the best understanding of my communication. I just wanted to communicate it to them the perfect way that they'll understand it. Am I going to speak to them in Spanish when they speak English? No, that don't make sense. But this is the method that you reading out of the book. I didn't just put this here. You reading this out of the book, and it's saying very clearly that with stammering lips, that's a stutter. If you don't believe me, when you don't know what a stammer is, look it up for yourself. That's a stutter, right? And with another tongue, he'll speak to his people. So he's purposely speaking to people in a way that they will not understand. Remember previously he said you have to get it precept upon precept. He's like, the reason why these babies, these toddlers, he said, who is he, who is he going to teach the knowledge to? Right? Those just wean from the milk and draw from the breast. The reason why these toddlers can't get it is because it has to be precept upon precept. It's a puzzle. You have to put it together. No different if we put a little 100 piece word puzzle on the uh, on the floor and try to have my little boy try to get to it. He's just going to make a mess out of it, slam pieces together, put pieces in the mouth, get drool all over him, make a darn mess. And that's where we are right now. A lot of people just drooling all over this book. They making a mess. They not teaching the book. They not learning the book. They just making a mess out of it. What we come to do is take our time with it. We can't we come to learn what we can. We come to obey what we have, and we can obey every bit of it. We can learn what we can, but you can obey every bit of it, right? And then after that, we come to teach. It has to be in that order. You get out here, and you just learn a little piece, and then you start jumping out there trying to teach too soon. And most High God spoke to you with stammering lips and another tongue. Let me show you the purpose of what he said. He said, with stammering lips and another tongue, God speaks to this people. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. But what happened? Yet they would not hear. They would not hear. So if they didn't hear, what do you think happened next? But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept. It was ununderstandable for them. Precept it was a puzzle precept. because to them. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. That they for might, what reason? That they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. This is the most high God talking to you. He said, I'm going to speak to you in a way that you don't understand. Just so if you don't pay attention and learn what I'm telling you, it's going to end up being a trap for you. That's what a snare is. He said that they might go and be what? Fall backward. Fall backward. Be broken. Be and broken. And taken. Snared and taken. A snare is a trap. So he set it up for you just to be a trap if you don't listen. And he's going to speak to you in a different language. So you're going to have to listen to him speak to you in another language, and then you're going to have to understand it. you got to learn how to understand it. Otherwise, this whole thing is a trap for you. We start here, and we look at these because we have to know what we're up against when we're looking at this book. You have to know who God is. It ain't too many people that's going to sit here and tell y'all this. A lot of people are going to tell you, if you just believe, you just put your heart. What does that mean, though? What does that mean practically? You want to know what believe means practically? Learn the book. You just saw the man. He just told you. He said, nobody comes to me unless the father draws him. And when he draws him, I'm going to raise him up at the last day. He said, it's written in the prophets that they shall all be taught of God. Therefore, anyone who has heard and has learned of the father comes to me. If you're going to get raised up at the last day, you've got to be drawn. And if you're drawn, that means you heard and you learned of the Father, and you're going to end up with me. And that's when I'll raise you up in the last day. Right? We have to understand the order that God lays out. You have to hear and you have to learn. He just told you they did not hear. He spoke to them in a different language, so they did not hear. Therefore, the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept. 
precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, right? Line upon line, here a little, there a little. For what reason? That they might go, fall backwards, be broken and snared and darn taken. That's the reason. Therefore, when we give the word, we can't just focus on New Testament. We've been there. We can't just focus. We just wrapped up Revelations. We can't just wait and go from Revelation and go back to Matthew. That don't make sense. That doesn't make sense. We have to get the whole book. We have to go from the storehouse. You know what I'm saying? You have to get the old grab. Um, oh, man, I wish I could remember. Let's see the I wish this way. was a good night. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see if we can get. Uh, let's see if we can get Timothy first. First uh, Timothy. Um, search around in two for me. I want to say it's in two. It might not be though. Maybe a three. I feel like a three is in it. Maybe it's like two thirteen. Maybe two thirteen. Something else. First Timothy two. I think that ain't that talking about our woman. Yeah. First Timothy two. I don't remember. That might be talking about our woman. Give me First Timothy two thirteen. I think I thought our one. But we are bound to give thanks always uh, to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you salvation through sanctification of the Spirit. And That's belief. First Timothy two thirteen. Man, it's Second Thessalonians. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for Adam was formed first. Yes, yeah, so about the woman. Let's grab a. Uh, Grab a three something, three nine maybe. Holding the mystery of faith and a pure conscience. Just scan through it. Tell me. Uh, I want to say it's towards the end of whatever chapter it is. The three is talking about bishops and deacons and stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, it might be in that at the end. Mm -hmm. Wasn't in there at the end. Well, I might have to cheat on this one. Go ahead and cheat, because I need that. Okay. All right, so we look at it. Hey, boy. We look at it, and it's important that we understand that the Most High God does want us to be saved. He does want us to repent. But his desire for us to repent doesn't override the order that he set up for that to happen. The whole the whole the whole plan that he has is to separate real from fake. Right? Separate wheat from tares. You saw you have all these parables that show you he's separating. He's setting everybody in the same environment and he built the environment to separate people. A lot of people want to know why in the world would God allow this to happen or God allowed that to happen. If God is God and he has control over everything how can you blame it on that's what we have making fun of when we just started when I was young when I was saying oh yes yeah, Satan at work the devil at work we're making fun of the fact that a lot of people put this stuff on Satan when does God take responsibility if God is God God running the whole darn show he got all the power in the world how are we gonna blame Satan right I mean Trump just the president and y'all blame him for everything how you don't use that same logic to where God did I mean, le I mean, let's just say America add a hundred thousand jobs. Who's gonna take credit for that? President. Let's just say, I don't know, a riot breaks out. President, three thousand miles away, and a riot breaks out. White supremacy. Who gonna who who get the blame for that? President. So I mean, why we can't? I mean, that's just a president. We know the limitations of a president. Clearly, y'all know. Cause I mean, why Obama didn't do more for black people? I mean, because, uh, you know, the president can only do so much. You know you know what they tell us. They know, they clearly, they know the limitations of a president now, right? So that's the president that get all that blame and all that credit. When it comes to God, he ain't got no limitations. However he wanted to go, that thing going to happen. So tell me, why would the devil get blamed when something bad happened and not God? Why are we not looking at God like, God, why, why you make that happen? Not even allow that to happen. You know, they try to use them weasel words. Well, God just allowed it to happen because, no, not allowed. Why did that, why did you make that happen? Right? A lot of people can't rock with God because the way that these people teach it, it don't make sense. It's not logical. And the man sit here and tell you. Go ahead. It's logical not to believe what they're saying. 
Yeah. yeah. If you sit here and you tell me it's the devil's fault, meanwhile, God is in full control, and God is going to defeat the devil, and God is stronger than the devil. The devil ain't got nothing on God, yet it's the devil's fault with all this bad stuff happened. So where was God to stop it then? Exactly right? Because God is a superhero at this point. Right? That's, if we paint them this way, you got the devil, mean devil, enemy. Right? And you got God, our friend, and he's stronger than the enemy. Right? So we painted the picture. You looking at, you got these, you got these people ready. They like, okay. Then all of a sudden something bad happened to them. They looking like, hold on, hold on. Where was this superhero God you was telling me about? Right? It doesn't make sense. It's logical not to believe it. It makes more sense to be like, that Bible was written by the white man. <laughs> I that thing, I mean, that, I mean, that thing makes sense. See, white people be lying. Y'all God obviously be lying. And y'all be lying on y'all God. Bible, written, white man. That's it. Right? We line that thing up in our mind. That makes logical sense. It's organized for us. We keep moving. Right? No. It don't make sense. So you go from one thing that don't make sense to another. Let's make, the, let's make it make sense. Devil ain't running nothing. Devil was a foot soldier. The devil was carrying out God's will for the things that they. You ever seen like you ever seen like a a a a, a mob boss or something? You got a mob boss, and it's just something he can't touch. So he is sending, you know, what I'm saying he's sending his buddy to do it. You know what I'm saying? You ever seen like a drug movie or a drug TV show? <laughs> he got it. He got to keep himself removed. You know what I'm saying? He can't be seen like he can't be on the streets doing hand to hand drugs. You know what I'm saying? He can't be seen doing nothing, nothing crazy like that because he got legitimate businesses on the side. He running drugs. You know what I'm saying? He, he a kingpin, but he got legitimate businesses over here. Right. So he can't he can't be seen doing none of that stuff. That's how God is. God like man, nah, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to tempt nobody with evil. But uh, devil, go ahead and grab. Him. Y'all think I'm lying. Find me, uh, find me, uh, goodness gracious. Second I won't, I won't, yeah, Second Kings, you said? Yeah, Second Kings, uh, what do I want? Second Kings, uh, it gotta be 20? I'll find it. We ain't gonna be finding nothing all night. You My brain shot it. this morning. You was looking for it. I'm looking for Timothy second, and I'm looking for, uh. Second Timothy 2.15. That's Second, oh, it was 2. Yeah, yeah, oh, second, second Timothy. Timothy. Second Timothy 2. Yeah. We, we coming back for Second Timothy 2. And I was looking for something else. You was look, I don't know. I was looking, looking for like something else. Seek the old paths or seek the old ways. Oh yeah, no, it wasn't that one though. But I want, I want Leviticus twenty six. I don't know where I wanted that, but Leviticus twenty six somewhere in the beginning. So don't let me forget. I want Second Timothy two, uh, Second Timothy. <laughs> I want Second Timothy two, and then I also want Leviticus twenty six. We gonna get this thing figured out tonight. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? My brain ain't working. I'm tired, I guess. I'm sleeping. I'm probably going to cut it out, but we took like three tries just on the opening. Goodness gracious. Jehoshaphat, Ahaz. I don't know. That's, I mean, what I tell you? What I say? Second Kings? It's First Kings twenty-two. First Kings twenty-two. Yeah, I'm about to say Second King might be too, be too fast, too far. It's uh First Kings chapter twenty-two. What verse? Uh, you want the whole story? Or you just want like? I want, I want the vision. Okay. What verse? Fourteen. We're start say? at sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Give me verse. What fourteen say? I want 16. 16 definitely what I want. But I want, I want, you know what I'm saying? You can give me a little bit before it. 14 is cool. 14. So it's uh it's uh first Kings verse 22. 14. I mean uh, four, uh first Kings chapter 22, 22 verse 14. 14. Right. Sorry about that. And Mike and Micah Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, what the Lord says unto me, that will I speak. Mm -hmm. So he came to the king, and the king said unto Micaiah. Shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? Uh huh. And he answered him, Go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Uh huh. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure you that you tell me nothing but that which is true? Couple in points the name I want to make Lord? here. Couple points I want to wear, and stuff I want y'all to say. I want y'all, 
when we read the book, I don't want y'all to like read it like we just reading some old story or some poetry or anything. I want y'all to really look at it and take the reality of it. Otherwise, this stuff will never be real for you. Look at it. Get everything out of your mind about what people taught you about the Bible or whatever. Just look at it and make sure you imagine it as realistic, right? What you just saw, and let me just give you backstory, some context. What you're witnessing is you have a king looking for advice. He's looking to prophets to guide him about what's going to happen, right? The majority of his prophets are saying, go to where? Gilead? Ramoth Gilead. Go to Ramoth Gilead. This is a city. And you can take it. You can take this. You can conquer this city. The majority of his prophets are saying, do it. Go for it. You can win, right? Then you add this one guy who's typically in dissent, right? He's, he's, he's typically saying something against the king. The king is well aware of this. The king talks to another king from the south who says, mm, do we have any more prophets? So the king goes and gets this prophet that's typically against him. He already expecting them to be against him. Jehoshaphat knew his prophets was liars, though. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> right? So he, the king expecting this guy to, to tell him something that's different from what he wants to hear. So he asks him. And notice, he tells him exactly what he wants to hear. But the king knew he was lying. Right? The prophet told him, the prophet that he knew would tell him that what he didn't want to hear, actually told him what he did want to hear. But the, the king knew he was lying. Right. So what what is that? What would we call that? Sarcasm. Sarcasm. You sarcastic for a lot of these Christians, a lot of these people, they'd be like, that's not of God. This is a prophet of the most high God. And clearly he was being sarcastic. Read it one more time. And I just want you all to look at the, 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 the reality of the situation. Right. Keep going. So he came to the king and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle or shall we forbear? The king is say, asking it. I mean, you can imagine the king just, all right. He don't want to talk to him. This, he, don't, he don't like this dude. You can imagine the king. Okay. Micaiah, should we go or not, man? Micaiah come back and he say. And he answered, go and prosper. For he the said, Lord go. Deliver it. Prosper. Don't worry about the guy. The Lord is going to deliver you. Right? He said that. Now watch the king's response. That's exactly what all the other prophets have been telling them. So why would the king respond this way? And the king said unto him, how many times shall I adjure you that you tell me nothing but what is true in the name of the Lord? He already knew. He said, I, know, I know that ain't what the God told you. Most high God told you. Right? So he looked at it. He said, how many times I got to adjure you? How many times I got to command you? Tell me. Right? Tell me. Let's see what Micaiah said. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep. This is a vision. He said, I saw all Israel scattered as what? Upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. Anytime we lose, it's because we're scattered. Anytime we lose, us as the people, Israel, Hebrews, it's because we're divided. We scatter. Right? Why do you think they why do you think they divided us all over uh all over uh all over the nations? Most high God had it set up for where these people would take us from Africa and then scatter us to all different nations. You think that was an accident? If we stuck together, we'd win. Right? Anytime we anytime we gonna lose, we gonna be divided. What do you say? Our people were divided. That's what he saw in this vision. What else you see? And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. Uh huh. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, did I not tell you that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? Uh huh. And he said, hear thou, therefore, the word of the Lord. He said, so now the king acknowledged, he said, told you, I knew he was going to say something evil. I knew he was going to say something against me. I knew he was going to be negative. Right? I knew it. Now watch this next vision. And he said, hear thou, therefore, the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. He saw the Lord, and the Lord was sitting. He saw the most high God whose name is Yah, and he was sitting on his throne. Watch this. Watch this. So you remember what I told you? You got a drug boss. I mean, a kingpin. He got some legitimate business. I mean, to the, to the masses, 
everybody thinks this is a nice guy. He owns businesses. I mean, he's just a businessman. For the people on the streets, they know it's like, well, he's running the whole show. Like the people who really know, he's running the whole show. But he can't be seen doing no hand to deal. That's not what I do. You know what I'm saying? I don't do no hand to hands. You know what I'm saying? I got people for that. You know what I'm saying? If I'm trying to do some hand to hand, I got people. I got people to do the dirty work. I don't do the dirty work. I make the decisions up top, up top, right? So he would say, you know what? I need something to be done. Who gonna take care of this for me? Right? There's no way that he would go out and do his own dirty work. That it wouldn't make sense for the kingpin. So now you had this the most high guy whose name is Yah sitting on this throne. Look at this vision. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. Uh huh. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit. So listen to what happened. He asked the question. Who going to take care of this for me? Who going to persuade Ahab that he need to go up to Ramoth Gilead? In other words, who going to set this man up to die? Y'all do realize that's what he's talking about. The whole prophecy that, that Micaiah just gave him is that he's going to lose. Right? He's going to go up there and there's not going to be a leader. Well, if Ahab is a leader and there's no leader at the time of battle, what does that mean? He got killed. He got killed. The whole prophecy he just told him said that Ahab is going to get killed. Right? Now he's telling him about a vision. And most of God is saying, who's going to trick Ahab? Who's going to persuade Ahab into going to battle so that he can lose? <laughs> and then one of the spirits came up and was like, I do it and this how I'm going to do it. Another spirit came up. I do it, and this how I'm going to do it. But then what? And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? Right? So then somebody else came up and said, I'll do it. Remember, let Christian tell you, good guy, God. Bad guy, devil. Arch enemies fighting against each other for the arctic good of the world. All this weird stuff that they have us <laughs> imagining, right? I mean, it's how they have it. Does it... it just looking at this, does that sound like it? If the most high guy is out there looking like somebody got to die, he could well prevent this. He could just be like, I'm not going to let you go, Ahab. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make your horse not run or something like that. God can stop this. Instead, he's looking like, hey, somebody, I need y'all to do me a favor. I need somebody to trick Ahab into going up to his battle so he can go to his death. Who's going to do that for me? He has a bunch of people. You know what I'm saying? He must not like that answer too much. Then the one that stood in front of him is like, oh, I'm going to do it. Then he's like, oh, how are you going to do it? You know what I'm saying? Let me hear about how you going to do it. Let's see what happens. And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. <laughs> now, who said that? God. Most High God told him, oh, you going to be a, a, you going to be a spirit to lie. I like that. I said, you know what? You're going to succeed with that one. Go ahead and do it. That's God. He made the call. He said, you, go ahead and do it. Right? That doesn't fit the idea that we've been lied to about for God. And this is what makes God so misunderstood. When you know this is God, I make the evil. I create the darkness and the light. I kill and I make a lie. And the good. I kill and I make a lie. Right? This is all words of God in the same book. He does, when you understand that point, now you can make a decision. Now you can be like, I don't want to serve no God that's willing to do that. That's a valid decision at that point because you've now made a decision based off of correct information. If you don't want to serve a God that is willing to put people in negative and even fatal situations for his own reasons, right? Now you have a valid situation for you to say, I don't want to serve God because it don't make sense that a God who has all power would let the devil do something. That's bad information. You don't want if somebody not going to serve. There's going, the majority of people are not going to serve God. Let's just face it. Right. That's fine that people don't serve God. That's fine for them. Right. What we want to look at is let's make sure people are making that decision based off of good information. This makes sense. 
Now we can look at it and be like, oh, God is running the entire show. A, a spirit, an evil spirit, Satan even, is coming to him, making a, look, I'll do it. That's his, that's his runner, right? That's his lackey. You know what I'm saying? Like, go ahead, handle my light work. How you think it was with Job? We ain't got to get it, but how you think it was with Job? Like, people imagine the devil, the devil attacked Job and he stayed righteous the whole time. That's a lie. The Most High God said, have you considered my servant Job? Same way, he asked him a question. Have you considered my servant Job? Even Satan himself, when he came the second time to the Most High God, he asked God, he is like, yeah, you put your hand out against Satan didn't say Satan didn't take credit for it when he was talking to God. He blamed God. Man, let's get it real quick. Grab grab uh, Job chapter two. This is Job chapter two. I still want Second Timothy two, and I still want um, Leviticus twenty six. And eventually, we got to make our way to Genesis. <laughs> but all this is important I mean if you understand we have to understand the entirety of the book like we have to understand the old and the new and if we don't understand how God is working we won't understand who we dealing with or why we're dealing with any of this in the first place you mess around and start thinking this stuff is myth because I mean if you set it up God versus the devil that's a myth that sounds like a darn myth that don't make no sense who running the show that's all I want to know. Who's running the show? And if he's running the show, how is this all happening? Well, once you learn, it's a part of his plan that make everything a little different. That make everything a little different. This is Job chapter 2, verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And who was with them? And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Now, Satan now is the big bad devil, arch enemy. All right? The king of darkness. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what the king of darkness is doing right now. And the Lord said unto Satan, from whence comest thou? He asked him a question. You know, the boy, where are you coming from? Let's see if Satan like ain't none of your business. Let's see. Let's hear Satan say that. And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and Better. from walking up and down in it. I mean, you ain't none of your business. You lost your darn mind. You talking to the most high God. And he presented himself with the sons of God. He got to show his respect. He ain't nothing but a lackey. Y'all give the credit, all this credit to the devil. He ain't lost y'all darn mind. That way ain't running nothing. What I look like talking about the devil? He got to rebuke the devil with the name of Jesus. They saw y'all, she would do that thing, and they just wear that thing out. What I look like rebuking the devil? The what, Lord, what does that have to do with me? The Lord rebuke you. These people didn't lost their mind. They don't do anything that the book tell us to do. And they do everything that the book don't say nothing about. All because we don't understand who God is. If we understand who God is, it's going to put a whole lot more fear. You understand that? Oh, I create the evil and I create the good. Oh, I kill and I make a lie. Oh, I create the darkness and I create the light. That changes everything. This whole thing run by me. You might want to line up. Right? You might want to line up with what I tell you to do. Whole shebang ran by me. Keep going. Watch this. Satan presented himself. He asked him, from where you coming from? He said, to and fro, walking across the earth. And the Lord said unto Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job? So let's just, I mean, Job, mind his own darn business. Job ain't bothering nobody. Y'all see how the Satan just like pointed him out? No. Nah, God pointed him out. God brought Job into the, the situation. He said, man, have you checked out Job yet? Let's hear what Satan said. And the Lord said unto Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that fears God and eschews evil? Mm -hmm. And still he holds fast in his integrity, although... You moved me against him to destroy him without cause. Who went against him now? You moved me against him to destroy him without cause. You didn't see nothing about God saying, the devil did it. He said, you moved me against him. I'm the one who did it. God took credit for it. 
He the president. What you? I mean, what you think? What you think? We not gonna blame Trump? Trump? He the president. You gotta blame Trump. That don't make no darn sense. Why you ain't gonna blame God then? Something happened to. I mean, I mean, let's just. I mean, let's just. I mean, it's awful that you get into a car wreck, right? That's. I mean, that's just awful that you get into a car wreck on your way to work. I mean, you already had some unfortunate events. So, I mean, that was your attendant points. All right, you miss one more day, you go, then you get into a car wreck. You get fired. You didn't have, you, all you had is liability insurance. So your car gone, you ain't got no job, and you in the hospital. And since you lost your job, you ain't got no insurance to pay for your hospital bill. That's terrible. I mean, that's real bad. Who fault is that? That's the devil or God? You let them tell it. Oh, the devil, I mean, you know, the devil just trying to, he just trying to, you know, the devil just trying to knock you off the page, trying to break your faith. That's all the devil trying to do. He's trying to break your faith. Meanwhile, God said, you move me against them. You move me against them. That's how, that's how, that's how God looking at it. I'm the one who did it. Watch how the devil looks. Let's see if the devil agrees. And Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. Yea, all that a man has will he give for his life. But put forth your put forth your hand now and put, touch put his forth bone. What? Your hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. Put forth your hand. Ain't got nothing to do with the devil. Devil sitting there letting off. Put forth your hand. Watch this. Watch what. Now notice he said, "Put forth your hand." God is putting forth his hand. Now watch what the devil say after this, or watch what God say after this. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, but save his life. He's in whose hand? Your hand. Satan just an extension of God's hand. That's it. I call a shot. You make it happen. And it's still going to be my fault. God is not weak like a lot of these people. A lot of these people won't take responsibility. A lot of these people will be like, man, Hey, I'm, I, hey, I tried to do what I can. He ain't tried to do nothing. He ain't cut that out. You look, you look at God. He's taking responsibility. It's my show. I know it's my show. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like it's not my show. Something bad happened. That's me, boy. Something good happened. That's me, too. You ought to did what I said. If you did what I said, you wouldn't have had the problem. I would have resurrected. What I'm, what I'm, okay, he say, I kill, I make alive, right? Now, when you know that, is death really all that scary to you? I mean, if you know the man that you serve kills, but he also, is that the order he says, I kill and make a lie? Okay. So if that's the order he gave it to you, I kill and I can make a lie. Is it really all that scary to you? The man promised you resurrection. Is that the end for you? Because that's a lot of what we get. It's a baby. A baby didn't die. Do you think God, who kills and makes a lie, who can bring your butt back if he wants to, do you think he's scared to have you go through a car accident and your baby die in it? For him, that don't mean a whole lot. What he's looking at is, are you serving me, and will you be resurrected in the end? Life for him is, I'll make that. That's what I mean, that's it. For us, it's everything, because we put everything in our life instead of putting everything in the man who gives us life. It starts to make sense when you look at it from God's point. When you pay attention to what God's trying to tell you, it starts to make sense. Only time it don't make sense is when you listen to the myths. When you look into, when it's God, red cake devil you know what i'm saying a sickle in a in a hoodie you know what i'm saying it's like you got it you, you when that's your picture of it it's like oh no no because they fighting against maybe god is not strong enough why is the devil winning that's the kind of mindset that we get in you know what i'm saying you look at it the way god presents it, it's like all right let me line up or let me not line up whatever but at least i got good information now i know how god works right it's important that we're able to understand that. That doesn't happen unless, just like that, just to understand that small point, we have to jump around a little bit. That doesn't happen unless you have somebody that's able to open up the book or unless the Most High God gives it on to you to open up the book. It's 2 Timothy chapter 2. What verse? 15. It's 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13, uh, 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. That's how the book is. 
Yeah, a lot of people just sitting there trying to, well, I'm just going to start at Genesis and just read it straight through. I mean, that's good. You do it. Read it straight through. Your butt going to be confused, though, if you ain't got no teacher or if the Most High God doesn't open it up to you. You have to pay attention to everything that's going on in the book. It's going to be jumping around, books not in order, you know what I'm saying, stuff not making sense. That's how it goes. Look, you're not going to make sense. You're not going to truly make sense of the Bible by reading it straight through. The only thing you could do is read it straight through, get familiar. Read it again, get familiar. Read it again, get more familiar. Yeah, maybe around, you know what I'm saying, maybe around the, the fourth time you start to read that thing, then stuff going to start jumping out at you. You're going to be looking like, oh, that goes with this. Oh, and that goes with this. Oh, if you put this together, it start, and then you start having the real pictures. Then you start to understand what's really going on. This is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God. He said, study to show yourself approved unto God. What do you have to do? Open up the book. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. He said, a workman that does not need to be, I mean, does not need to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You see this theme that we got going on? You got one verse to tell you. You got to bring from the storehouse old and new, right? You got one verse to tell you you have to hear and learn. You got one verse to tell you precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. All these things. Then you got another one that's telling you rightly dividing the word. Well, if you put in this precept with this precept, that's dividing it, right? You taking some from here, there, some from there, some from the old, some from the new. That's dividing it. You have to have, you, you have, the word cannot just be, here you go. It has to be taken and divided and put together in a certain way. You have to split it up. That's why you say you have to rightly divide the word. Grab Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 26. Because now we know it got to be divided, but now we just, I mean, like, what order? Where should we start? It's Leviticus chapter 26. You might have to scan it for me, but I want to say it's like the top, the first three verses. Maybe verse three. What verse three say? Uh, you shall make no idols. No, I don't want that. Do you know what I'm looking for, though? Leviticus 26, kind of like Deuteronomy chapter 28. You sure you want to be in this chapter? I want to say it's Leviticus 26. I'm looking for storehouses. That's not what I'm looking for? I want to say it's 26. might be hold on uh yeah you want first uh, uh we'll start at verse nine verse nine yeah. i didn't know it was that far down this is uh this is leviticus chapter 26 verse nine for i will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish you and establish my covenant with you mm -hmm. and ye shall eat old store he said you gonna what eat old store so you gonna eat old store and why and bring forth the old because of the new. Notice what he just told you there. You're going to eat old store, and you're going to bring forth the old because of the new. That, that is talking about food, right? Literally. But spiritually, this is giving us a principle. The new coming in should drive us to understand the old. That gives us our order, right? That gives us our order. There's a lot of people you look at, man, you get something new. I mean, I'm going to get that and throw the old out, right? He's telling us, no, when the new comes, you need to be getting rid of that old by eating it. Don't throw it out. You get rid of the old by eating it and then move on to the new. And by the time you get to the new, that's going to be old. Then you have more new coming out, right? That's our principle. So when we have our New Testament that's, that comes, that should immediately drive us back to the old. Instead, what people have done is they said what? The Old Testament is with. done away with. They've thrown it out. That's not a biblical principle. Right? It should have immediately drove, driven us back to the old. As soon as the new come, we start hearing something new, the very first thing we should have done is what? Not to the old. Compared to the old. 
That's why even when Yahushua spoke, he quoted the scriptures. He quoted the law. When the, when the apostles spoke, they quoted the scriptures. They quoted the law because they had something new. Therefore, they had to bring you back to the old. That's, our, that's a spiritual principle for us. Right? That's why when we get done with revelations, where do you think we're going to go? Matthew? That don't make sense. We got to go back to the old. We got to make our way all the way back. Right? And the only way, the only way you can do that is if you really understand it, but you have, you have to be able to rightly divide the book. That's If you out there, if you want to be a teacher of God's word, you want to help people out, best thing you can do is take your time. Best thing you do, just take your time, take your time, learn, study. Before you start teaching anything, make sure you understand this book. It's dangerous. It's too easy to think you got something and then you start running off and just boom, you got your own denomination now. And that thing go taking people straight to hell. Straight to hell. Just take your time, look at the book, and hold steady to what the Bible said. Don't make nothing up. Don't guess at nothing. Look at what the Bible say and go exactly with what it say. All right? It's important. Because a lot of people don't understand. We We've thrown away, we've thrown away the Old Testament simply because it didn't make sense to us. We thought it wasn't rel relevant. Whole thing, we love Jesus though, right? Oh, he, oh he Christian. Oh, 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 oh. He Christian love Jesus. Right? They love him some Jesus. Old Testament though? Nah. What you think the Old Testament is about? Who you think the Old Testament is written about? Well, this whole thing that we throwing out, what do you think it's written about? Even we read in Revelation, it told us that. It's Revelation 19. It's Revelation 19, chapter 10. I mean, uh, chapter 19, verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. Remember we read this? Look, he said, See thou do it not. Watch this. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahushua. Which is what? Worship God. Uh-huh. For the testimony of Yahushua is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Yahushua is the spirit of prophecy. You know what that's trying to tell you? All the prophets in the Old Testament, they were talking about Yahushua. They're saying the testimony that Yahushua have is really the spirit of prophecy. So all these, all this time that we was listening to these, these prophets in the Old Testament, they was coming in the spirit of Yahushua. They were coming in the spirit of his testimony. So what do you think you're reading about? When you read, I mean, when you read the Old Testament, and this Old Testament has done away with that you don't need no more. You think you're throwing away something that's worthless when you're throwing away the man that you that you say you love. It's important for us to understand what we're doing. This stuff has to immediately drive us to the old. Otherwise, man, we're making a darn mess. Peter tells us, get 2 Peter. It's 2 Peter chapter 2. Peter tells us the exact same thing. Watch this. It's 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 19. We end up throwing this stuff away, and we're looking like, well, that's where all the gold is. We got to be able to bring the treasure from the old and the new. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. Mm -hmm. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same That's is second he... Peter? Yeah. Give me first Peter then. That's first Peter chapter 2, verse 19. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. Mm, that's first Peter. Yeah. What are you looking right. for? I'm looking for. I'm looking for. I'm looking for. Um, we have a more sure word of prophecy. I want to say a second Peter. Let's go back to second Peter. That's uh. Maybe second chapter Peter one. Chap verse one. Second Peter verse one. Chapter uh, chapter one. I mean first Peter two verse one. It's first Peter chapter two verse, verse one. one. Yeah. No. No, it's not. I'm looking at it right now. There's no way that it's 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Wait. 
Wait a second. It might be 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. It's at the end of whatever chapter it is for sure. No, hold on. Give me first give me first Peter chapter hmm. give me second Peter chapter one verse nineteen. Second Peter chapter one verse nineteen. Yeah, that's it. Chapter one. Second Peter one nineteen. It's second Peter chapter one verse nineteen. We have also a more sure word of prophecy mm -hmm. whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. As unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Uh-huh. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. He said no prophecy of the scriptures were of any private interpretation. In other words, all this stuff was say God spoke to my heart or uh, God, I have a personal relationship with God and he speaks to me personally. All that stuff is a myth. All that goes directly against what he just said. It's your interpretation of what God is telling you is never going to be private. It's never going to be only for you. Right? It's never going to be something that only you, a message that only you got. It's always going to be consistent with what everybody else has. Right? If they truly got it from God. Right? That's how the prophet Micaiah could separate himself from the lying prophet. Because what they said was not consistent with what a true prophet of God said, right? And other prophets of God would have had the same testimony, right? It's never going to be a private. Watch what he say next, though. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. They were moved by who? The Holy Ghost. That means the Holy Ghost is the spirit of prophecy. I mean, it's the, uh, the testimony of Yahushua. Because we know the testimony of Yahushua is the spirit of prophecy. Right? He said they were moved by the Holy Ghost. We know the spirit of prophecy was the testimony of Yahushua. Right? You can break it all down if you go to John 5. Watch this. This John chapter 5. That kind of just shoot down their whole Trinity idea. They like to say, you know, God is... Three separate persons in one persona, or whatever fancy way they got it was saying, explaining the Trinity. So it don't make no darn sense. And it don't hold up when you look at it. Because what they want to try to say is, this, uh, yeah, this is how they explain it. They say, they say, well, you could be one person and operate in three, they always use fancy, three facilities. You know what I'm saying? Something fancy like that. They mean, like, say, I'm a dad. I'm also a son. And I'm also a husband. So technically, I'm three. So I'm like, okay, so you walk around, you a trinity then. Say it. Just say it. Just say you a trinity. No, they ain't going to say it. They don't say you, you, and you have three different jobs, three different roles you play. And you have more than that because you also, a, a, you know what I'm saying, a co-worker. You know what I'm saying? And you also a darn, uh, you know what I'm saying, a darn uh, uh, brother, nephew, homeowner. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You also, it's a whole, you're a whole lot of the brother, a nephew, all that. you a whole lot of stuff. Why limit it to three? Did God limit his to three? Well, see, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. What about when God popped up and there were three men, right? Three men that showed up to Abraham. And they said one of them was the Lord. Why he ain't included? That's four right there. That's one extra man. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and that guy that showed up to Abraham. What about when he showed up as a burning bush? That's five there. They had Father, Son, Holy Ghost, God that showed up to Abraham, burning bush. We can keep darn going. The commander of the army of the Lord had appeared to Joshua. Why we ain't counting all these different ways that the most high God shot? Why, why are these the only three that we decide to count? Because it's a myth. That's why. These people want to make up their own stuff because they don't understand what the most high God talking about. What he's trying to explain to you is, I'm not a trinity. 
if you even try to take it and try to separate them, you'll see that sometimes it's going to say the Holy Ghost, and it's going to say in another place, that's the spirit of Yahushua. How you explain that? Sometimes it's going to say the Father does this, and other times it's going to say, well, Yahushua created this. How you explain that? Because it's all one. That's why he started off in our commandments. He say, Yahuwah, your God, is one God. That's the greatest of all commandments. He started off the greatest of all commandments. Love Yahuwah, your God. Right before he say that, though, he says, Yahuwah, your God, is one God. I don't think it get more simple than that. I don't think it get more simple than that. Yahushua had a prayer. He said, make them one as we are one. When does this trinity come out? It doesn't. All this stuff is myth, but you understand it when you start to obey the doctrine. When you understand what the Most High God is giving you and you obey his will, he'll open up our minds to all this stuff. All this other stuff, all these different myths that they give us. Where are we at? John 5. This is John chapter 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures. He said, search them. the scriptures. For in them, you think you have eternal life. You think you about to get eternal life from, from reading them scriptures. And they are they which testify me. Who they testify now? Yeah, sure. Scripture is the Old Testament. Old Testament. Whole time you read the Old Testament, guess what it's talking about? Yahushua. sure. And guess what y'all say it's done away with? Yahushua. sure. You get rid of that, you're getting rid of Yahushua. Right? This is a good place to ease into uh, John 1. Let's go to John 1. All right? Now this is going to make a little bit more sense to us. And from John 1, we're going to jump into Genesis. This is perfect. Watch this. After this, I want Genesis. John 1 going to open this up. Beginning of the world. Watch this. In the beginning was the word. He said, in the beginning was the what? Word. The scripture. He said, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Oh, look at that. He said, and the word was God. You didn't hear him say nothing about no trinity. He said, he was with God, and at the same time, he was God. Right? Keep going. The same was in the beginning with God. Uh-huh. All things were made by him. All things were made by him. Pay attention to that. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made. It was made. nothing made without the word of God. Right? Keep going. In him was life. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And so in that life, you have light. It was the light of men. Right? Keep going. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The light shines in the darkness. Darkness didn't even understand the light. All right? Keep going. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Oh, so now you got John the Baptist. Let's hear about John the Baptist. So he just, y'all have to hold on to what he just said. Now, he's he talking about the word, the word that was with God, and the word that everything that was created, it was created by this word. Right? Then he said that in this word had light. And that life was the light of men. That light shined out into the darkness, but the darkness didn't understand the light. Right? Then after that, he started talking about some dude named John the Baptist. Let's hear about John the Baptist. But hold on to that first piece now, because he ain't done. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. So remember, this word that was also God, that was also life, that was also light, was now being born as a witness by John the Baptist about light because remember he's also the word god you know what i'm saying all these different things where trinity come in now? i mean he's a whole lot of things that this thing is right why is it three why why can't he why can't we start counting all these things that he is right so john the baptist now come along and he say what he was not that way the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe uh-huh he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Uh-huh. That was the true light, which lightened every man that comes into the world. Uh-huh. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. So he was in the world, and the world was made by him. And guess what? The world didn't know him. 
That sounds a lot similar to what was said before. The light shined into the darkness, and the darkness comprehended him not. But let's keep going. So he was in the world. The world was made by him. The world didn't know who he was. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. And many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. He said, and anybody who received him, if they believed on his name, they had the power to become the sons of God. What else? Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Mm -hmm. and, the world, and the word was made flesh. The word. So remember, it started off saying, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God, and the same was with God. Right. So now it's saying that same word became what? Flesh. So when I tell y'all that Yahushua is God, there's some Hebrew Israelites that have a problem with that. But if it just tell you very clearly, verse one in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And the same was with God. Then it later tells you the word became flesh. What can we say? Man is God. I don't see no other way to look at it. Man is God. You have to go throw that out. I'm fine with you throwing it out. But if you're going to keep it, the man is God. I ain't no other way to look at it. Right? It's important that we're able to understand this stuff. Right? Now Genesis makes sense to us. Let's go to Genesis 1. This is Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the words earth. And the earth was without form and void. Uh huh. And darkness was on the face of the deep. Uh huh. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Mm hmm. And God said, "Let there be light." And there was light. All right. So you see, in the beginning was the word, and anything that was created was by that word. What God say? Let there be what? Let there be light, and there right? was light. And that word was the, the life, and that life was the light of men, and the light shined into the darkness, right? So let's see what happens next. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. So God divided the light from the darkness. All right? Keep going. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Mm -hmm. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Mm -hmm. What else? And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the God waters. God did what now? Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Notice that he said it. Because in the beginning was the word. And everything that was created was created by the word. So he said, let there be light. And he said, let there be a firmament. Keep going. Let there be a firmament in the space in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Mm -hmm. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. In the evening, He called it heaven. He named it heaven. You have to speak words to do that. In the evening and the morning were the second day. All right? You look at this stuff. What nothing created without the word. Right? Grab uh, Proverbs chapter 8. This Proverbs chapter 8. These people don't know. They, they, they throwing this whole book out. They don't even know. They don't even know what they throwing away. It's good stuff that we read. Good stuff that's in this book. And we just throw it away. Walk around with Bibles that got Psalm and Proverbs in it. 
and then the New Testament. Worthless. Absolutely worthless. Ain't going to do nothing but cause confusion. This Proverbs chapter 8. Give me verse, I don't know what verse I need, maybe 25. It should start with like uh, something about I was with them in the beginning or something like that. 25 in the chapter. No. Uh, maybe. T- I want to say it's in the 20s it started, but I guess it's 22. Actually 22? Mm-hmm. I said, sure. I thought it was longer than that. 22, it started. What did it say? The Lord possessed me in the beginning. That's it. Yep. So the Lord possessed me in the beginning. Watch this. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning. Or he said he was set was, up was. from everlasting. Right? What that means is always been there. Right? Keep going. From the beginning or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When mm-hmm. there were no found fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were set settled, before the hills was I brought forth. Mm-hmm. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. Mm-hmm. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set up a compass up upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, Mm -hmm. rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with his with were with the sons of men. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Blessed are they that keep his ways. Keep going. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that hear me watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. Mm -hmm. For whoso finds me finds life Uh and shall obtain favor of the Lord. This light was the life of men. This life became the light of men, rather. Because whosoever find him find life. Right? This is talking about the wisdom of God in Proverbs, but we know who it's talking about. Yahushua. But he that sins against me wrongs his own soul. So why don't they include wisdom into the Trinity? I mean, if we, I mean, we just start throwing, because this is wisdom that Proverbs is talking about. Clearly, it's saying, I was with him as one brought up with him. So it's not like, it's not like I was with him and like, I'm like, he's, the wisdom is talking about, she was with him and they was equals. He, as one brought up with him. When he created all that stuff, I was with them, and I was like one brought up with them. She's talking about they equal, right? So why don't wisdom get thrown into, into this Trinity thing, right? It should be God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the one that showed up to Abraham, God the one that appeared in the burning bush, God the, the, God the, the Word, God the light, God the life, right? God the Word that became flesh. All right, then it should be wisdom. I got 10. I mean, that ain't even all inclusive. <laughs> I got a tenity. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what you're going to call that thing. Right? They make a fool out of us coming up with this stuff. Stuff don't make no darn sense. No darn sense. They make up their own rules and they try to squeeze it into our brains to make it make sense. Not me. Not no more. Most I got liberated my mind. I appreciate them for it, too. I appreciate them for it. I just take what the books say. I don't see no trinity in it. If I'm going to be fair, I'm going to count them all. If we're going to count them, I mean, let's just count them all. Let's say God got 10 persons, right? If we're going to do it, but I'd rather go with what the books say. It's a Yah is one. Let's go back to Genesis. Where we leave off at? Let's hear what else the word created. It's verse 8. It's Genesis chapter 1, verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven in the evening and the morning were the second day. All right. All this is talking about Yahushua. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, mm-hmm. and let the dry land appear, and it was so. Mm-hmm. And God called the dry land earth, 
in the gathering together of the waters called he sees. Mm -hmm. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. Mm -hmm. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Mm -hmm. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God so said, I wonder what's going to happen after the third day. Watch this. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Look at that. Light is revealed again after the third day. I mean, the word which became flesh, who is also life, who is also the light of men. I mean, he was put on the cross, died, went into darkness, into a tomb, three days, three nights. And then on the third day, he rose. I mean, that's the light of men that did that. And then right after this, what you got? After the third day, you got firmament in the heavens. I mean, I'm sorry, you got lights in the heavens, right? Let's hear about these lights. You got the greater light and the lesser light. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. Uh huh. And God made two great lights, mm -hmm. the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. Mm -hmm. He made the stars also. All right? So you got all these lights to, to help us and guide us. You know, that's how the Most High God is. He keep a light out there for us. All right? That also talks about Yahushua. All right? When we had Yahushua with us, he called that the day. He said... Walk with it, walk in the day while the day is still with you. All right? Then, what we just read from Peter, he said, We have a more sure word of prophecy. So, we would do well to cling on to it as a light in a dark place. So, that's like the lesser light. That's like the moon. All right? Most High God was here in the flesh. All right? And that's the day because we got the light is clear. All right? After that, he leaves. And then we have just a lesser light that we got to cling on to. We here still. But, I mean, it's just, I mean, a lesser light. He ain't just illuminating the whole place. All this is about Yahushua. The whole book is about Yahushua. All the Old Testament is about Yahushua. What do you think? Why do you think it's telling us about all this? Because because God care about history that much? Because there's a whole lot of details of history that he could have let us know on, right? Why are you going to all these details? Chapter 2 real quick. We're just going to shoot the Genesis real quick. I'm just going to show y'all something just, just as we go through it, just so we'll understand. We got Genesis chapter 2. I think I want maybe verse, I don't know. Give me verses that say these are the generations. What is that, verse 3, 4 maybe, 5, maybe 7? It can't be 7, so it got to be like 3. 4. four. This is Genesis chapter 2, verse uh, 4. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth. When they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. What's another word for generations? Genealogy. This is the genealogy of the heavens and the earth. Right? So he told us all that to get us to a point where we could talk about something else. Who does he talk about next? In every plant of the field before. No, I just want you to answer me. Who does he talk about next? What comes up next? What's the next story that we're going to get in Genesis? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Why is he talking about Adam and Eve? Because they're so important? Man. He tells us about Adam and Eve because Adam and Eve have kids. Right? Then we get into their kids. And who we learn about? Cain and Abel? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we learn about Cain and Abel. And what we learn about them because they're so important? Let's think about it. Adam is the son of God. Right? That represents Yahushua. Right? He has a wife. She represents the congregation. Okay. Then we move on. We have Cain and Abel. We have Abel. He makes a sacrifice. Of what? Uh, firstborn of the flock, right? Firstborn of the flock. These are herd animals, likely a lamb or a goat, right? Sheep of some sort, right? He makes a sacrifice, a blood sacrifice, and he gives it to the Most High God. That represents Yahushua, who's the Lamb of God, All right? Then let's keep on going. It tells us a little, about, a little bit about Cain and his kids. Then it gets us on to Seth, 
who's a replacement, and you know, in a way, yeah, for was killed by his brother. huh? Lamb was killed by his brother. The what? Lamb was killed by his brother. Oh, the, oh yeah, I can't even forget that part. You had a brother who kills the man, right? So he was killed by a brother. Who killed Yahushua? His brother. People of his own country, Judah, right? Put their hands up against him, right? Thank you. I appreciate that. Right? Then we keep going. Then we have Cain. Then we have Seth. Right? So jump on the chapter, what, four? I want five. I want five. It's chapter five. Right? So these stories, remember, you had the genealogy of the earth. It tells us about Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. It tells us a little bit about Seth. Then all of a sudden, we get into chapter five and watch what it tells us now. This is the book of the generations of Adam. The who? Uh, the book of the generations of Adam. Now we're talking about generations again. Right? So we had the genealogy of the earth. This is how the earth was created by God. Now we have the genealogy of Adam. Right? So we read through all of this chapter, and we get, and just give me the last verse. And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So it gives us all the genealogy of Adam, and it gets us all the way to Noah. What happens next? Flood. Flood. I mean, but all these people we've covered so far, why is it only picking out certain people? Adam and Eve had many sons. It tells us sons and daughters, it say. Right? Why did we only hear about Cain and Abel and then end up only talking about Seth's descendants? Right? And then we get all this way. We didn't get no details on any of these people that we named. And then it gets to Noah. And guess what we're about to hear about? Noah. So we hear, end up hearing about Noah. So we learn about Noah. There's a flood. He has three sons. Their wives get on the boat. Yay, yippee, they're saved. Fast forward to Genesis chapter 10. Let's see what we hear now. It's Genesis chapter 10, verse 1. It gave us the whole story of Noah. Most High God flooded the entire earth. What does that represent? Baptism. Baptism. Right? We have an ark, the ark of God, right? The ark of God. If you're inside of this ark, you're saved. If you're outside of this ark, you don't abide in this ark, you die. Right? And the whole world is baptized, completely submerged underwater. All about Yahushua. Okay. So we get to chapter 10. What do we hear again? This These Genesis are the chapter. Generations of the sons of Noah. Now we got genealogy again. The generations of the soul. We have the generations of the earth. We have the generations of Adam. And now we have the generations of the son of Noah. All these different people that have been involved in the world at this point. Why are we only hearing about these? And it just seems like we hear about one group, one man's children, just so we can get to the next man's children. Tell us a little bit about that man. Then we get to the next man's children. I don't know. Let's go to the last person in this genealogy. This is uh, Genesis chapter 11. Give me the last verse. Give me the last two verses. It goes through a whole genealogy. Watch this. What did I say? Genesis chapter 11? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Genesis chapter 11, last two verses. Verse 31. 31? This is Genesis chapter 11, verse 31. Watch this. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abraham, Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Who do we have introduced just now? Abram. Abram who later becomes Abraham, right? So over the next chapters, we learn about Abraham and Lot, right? That turns into us learning about Isaac. We ain't even got to get all the, got to get all the, we're going to dig into real deep about how all these people represent Yahushua. But you learn about Abraham, Lot, right? Then you learn about Isaac. We're going to later learn that Isaac has two sons, right? Jacob and Esau. They also represent Yahushua, but we'll talk about it, right? Then Jacob has, a, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Jacob has sons, right? And then they have sons that become the 12 tribes of Israel. 
the 12 tribes of Israel. Then we learn about their genealogies, right? And then we go into Egypt. We go into the next book, Exodus. We're coming out of Egypt. We have Moses. That's all Genesis is. Genesis is narrowing down. It's giving you necessary history only to get to one man, Yahushua. That's it. It's just giving you necessary. It can cover all the details of the world, but you notice it doesn't. It covers the details of the people who are going to get you to Yahushua. It goes from Adam. Then it's going to take you to Noah. Then it's going to take you to Abram. Right? Abraham is going to give you Jacob. Jacob is going to give you the Israelites. Right? The Israelites are going to get you to Moses. Moses is going to get you to law. After you get to the law, that law is going to take you to Yahushua. That's book. And when before you get to Yahushua, guess what it narrowed down for you? The generations of Yahushua. It's all about one man. That's it. The whole book, all about one man. You throw this book away, you threw everything away. You threw your whole salvation away. You lost your darn mind. That's what we're going to be going over. We're going to be going over everything in the Old Testament in the light of how it testifies of Yahushua. Right? We'll look at it. We're going to start with Genesis. We're going to kind of pick up. We're going to go over some of the stuff that we kind of fast forwarded past. That way we can kind of get into details and make sure that people understand. But this is just a brief understanding of what we expect. The whole book represents the man. That's what we're looking to find out. Any questions? Let's pray out.